no one will care for you like your parents will care for you. At Annur Education Center, we give orphans a loving home, clothing, food, and education. Be the orphan's parent by sponsoring an orphan for 18,000 rand or 1,500 rand per month. Annur Education Center, a place where orphans call home. Imagine, imagine a world where each person has access to their basic rights. A world where everyone is equal. Imagine a world where each person will have an equal share in each single seed of wheat. Where each child has the freedom to learn. This Ramadan, we ask you to feed the fasting in 14 countries around the world with AMA. Provide an iftar box for 100 rand, a hamper for 1,500 rand, or feed a village for 15,000 rand. Donate today at Africa Muslims Agency and imagine the difference you can make.
أو ولا تجزون إلا ما كنتم تعملون إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في ظلال على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يتعون سلام قولا من رب رحيم وامتاز اليوم أيها المجرمون ألم أعهد إليكم يا بني آدم أن لا تعبنوا الشيطان إنه لكم عدو مبين وأن اعبدوني هذا صراط مستقيم ولقد أضل منكم جبلا كثيرا أفلم تكونوا تعقلون هذه جهنم التي كنتم توعدون اصلوا اليوم بما كنتم تكفرون اليوم نقتم على أفواههم وتكلمنا أيديهم وتجهد أرجلهم بما كانوا يكسبون ولو نشاء لطمسنا على أعينهم فاستبقوا الصراط فأنا يبصرون ولو نشاء لمسخناهم على مكانتهم فما استطاعوا مضيا ولا يرجعون ومن نعمره ننكزه في الخلق فلا يوقنون وما علمناه الشعر وما ينبغي له إن هو إلا ذكر وقرآن مبين لينذر من كان حيا ويحق القول على الكافرين أولم يروا أنا خلقنا لهم مما عملت أيدينا أنعاما فهم لها مالكون وذللناها لهم فمنها ركوبهم ومنها يكونون ولهم فيها منافع ومشارب أفلا يشكرون واتخذوا من دون الله آلهة لعلهم ينصرون لا يستطيعون نصرهم وهم لهم جند محضرون فلا يحزنك قولهم إنا نعلم ما يسرون وما يعلنون أولم ير الإنسان أنا خلقناه من نطفة فإذا هو قصيم مبين وضرب لنا مثلا ونسي خلقه قال من يحيي العظام وهي رميم قل يحييها الذي أنشأها أول مرة وهو بكل خلق عليم الذي الذي جعل لكم من الشجر الأخضر نارا فإذا أنتم منه توقدون أوليس الذي خلق السماوات والأرض بقادر على أن يخلق مثلهم بلى وهو الخلاق العليم 
إنما أمره إذا أراد شيئا أن يقول له كن فيكون فسبحان الذي بيده ملكوت كل شيء وإليه ترجعون صدق الله العظيم Sadaq Allah Mawlana Lazim, verily Almighty Allah speaks the truth. Jazakallah khair, shukran, and baitra makasi to Hafiz Imran for that most melodious recitation of the glorious Quran. May Almighty Allah accept and may Allah bless us all through the barakah of the glorious Quran. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. My dearly beloved Jamaat al-Muslimin, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. It gives me great pleasure indeed to present to you our speaker for today, Sheikh Muaz Kala, an international lecturer, resident scholar before of Masjid Abu Bakr in Pretoria, and he was also the resident scholar at Medina Institute in Arkansas in the USA. He studied in, in Jordan and in America, and is currently pursuing his honors degree in Islamic studies at UNISA. And he will be speaking to us today about a very relevant and a very important topic. And I want you to pay extreme heed to his nasiha for today as he address us today on the topic, how to deal with the LGBTQ issue. Without further ado, the Honorable Sheikh Mu'az Kala, Faliyatafaddal Mashkura, Ya Habibi. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا رسول الله وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين ورضي الله عن أصحابه وأزواجه وذريته وأحبابه وأتباعه أجمعين وعنا معه برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to show us the straight path so that we may follow it and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us the incorrect paths of the way so that we may stay away from it. Amma abad, my dear brothers and sisters, honorable Shaykh, uh, all to all the trustees of the masjid and to our elders and to anyone I may have forgotten, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us an opportunity to gather for his sake. And sometimes we don't know when we will be able to gather for him again. So Alhamdulillah, we see our brothers, we come together. And one of the things of Jumu'ah which is so important always is that we gather to learn. And that's the, you know, that's the, the English khutbah that we have or the English lecture that we have. We gather to learn for his sake. And it's that time once every week only that we all gather for Allah and that, you know, our businesses or our workplaces are closed and we come to just be here for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so with that we are talking about the issue of the LGBTQ IA plus and so forth I mean they have a lot of different names they're working on their own acronyms at the moment and among the acronyms just so that you know LGBTQ plus stands for lesbian gay, bisexual, LGBT. Q is either queer or questioning, uh, LGBTQ. Yeah, transgender, I must transgender the T in there as well. And then the pluses they said we'll add on as we go along. So, you know, the latest, if I can just share it with you, I, I really couldn't memorize it, it's a bit long. But if I can share with you among the latest, uh, you know, 
acronyms that they have, if I can just get it here on my phone quickly. The latest acronym that they have is LGBTIQCAPGNGFNBA. And I'm not even lying. This stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex, questioning, curious, asexual, pansexual, gender non-conforming, gender fluid, non-binary, and androgynous. I couldn't memorize that even if I tried. Allah help us. So, how do we deal with the situation? What is the Islamic stance? What is the current situation that we have today? And what are Muslims supposed to do about this? So first, we always go back to our Quran and Sunnah. That's our focal point for everything. What does the Quran and the Sunnah tell me? The first thing the Quran obviously says about the Qawm of Lut alayhi salam, that they did this, these acts of, uh, you know, what would be considered gay today, that men slept with other men, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent a punishment, punishment to them. And Allah said, إِنَّكُمْ لَتَأْتُونَ rijal." You have gone to rijal, to men, dunan nisa, and you have left off the woman. So, some people now try to justify this, and some Muslims, and we'll get to the reality on the ground today, but some Muslims try to justify this ayah, and this is one of the problems we have. They say, no, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about is that men would rape other men in those times, and that's why Allah sent the punishment. But, unfortunately, the ayah does not tell us there was any rape in there, number one. Number two, the ayah also does not give us any language indications. The Arabic language is a very vast language, as you all know. And the word ya'ti ata, which is used, or it's a root of what was used, ta'tun is used in the verse. It indicates, among its things, it indicates someone visiting you from a language perspective and visiting voluntarily. There is no force used with this word. So therefore, those who try to justify by saying, no, these people were raping each other, and that's what people do. Muslims today try to justify that, huh? not non-Muslims. Muslims try to justify this. So they do this, but there's no evidence for it in Al-Quran. Sometimes there's a lack of Arabic understanding. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly tells us, and you all know the verses, so I will just skip over them. He tells us that the punishment came for them. And they did these crimes. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam also told us a lot about the qawm of Lut alayhi salam and what their struggles were obviously or what their punishments came for. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam also prohibited that men and, uh, men and women not just men and men, he prohibited men and women from sleeping with each other through the back way, right? He said, "Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir falla yati an nisa fi duburiha." And this also helps us understand that whoever believes in Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in the final day, let him not approach his wife from behind. I don't have to tell you more than that, because this is obviously the house of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. But we need to be clear in what we say. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us, Inna Allah la yastahi lil ilm. Allah is not shy when it comes to knowledge. And what does that mean? That means that we must leave no room for confusion once we leave here. That means that I have to sometimes say words which are not worthy of the house of Allah, but in the maqam or in the status of knowledge, we have to sometimes say them. So now fast forward, that is the Qur'an and Sunnah. Qur'an clearly prohibits these things. First of all, uh, sleeping with another man, a woman sleeping with a woman, or a man sleeping with a man. Transgenderism, changing our physical gender, changing our biology, this is made haram through many ahadith. And there is no Muslim worth his salt that will say it's not haram. Because also, Talking on these issues, if one was to say that, uh, you know, it is not haram, it could lead to kufr as well. Because now you are making the haram into halal. 
This is a very big problem. And I'm not saying anyone is kafir out there, I'm saying it could lead to that. Because it's a case by case basis. So now fast forward to today, we have these issues that are facing us as Muslims. How do we deal with this as Muslims? How do we live with people who we feel are doing haram? And how do we protect ourselves? So my dear brothers, it's no longer a journey for us of being on our own and living. Because let me tell you, I know in my own community, I know in plenty other Muslim communities where children are becoming gay and bisexual and transgender. Many, and I'm talking about Muslims, and they leave the religion because they are condemned. So I'll just tell you some of my experiences in the US. And we are not too far away from the US. In this issue, I personally feel that we are two to three years away max from all of these things coming to us. I saw a gay only dhikr circle. You could only be in this dhikr circle if you are gay and it's in Milwaukee in the US. I saw that atheism and this mixed together. I saw a six year old child after two weeks of school who was raised as a Muslim. He goes to his mother and he says, Mama, I want to be a Christian. How is it that a six year old child decides this? How is it that we have children in the US currently that are between the ages of 8 and 12 currently saying that mommy and daddy I want to be a boy when, I'm, when, when they are biologically a girl and when they are biologically a boy they say I want to be a girl. Who is influencing them in this way? How is it possible? Children don't have these understandings in and of themselves. What I understood also is that through education today, unfortunately the education system is being forced upon us that your kids must learn these things. And I urge you and I request of all of you to get involved in your kids' education. Find out what they are learning because there are books coming out today called It's Okay for 10-year-old children. It's Mark 10 and above. And it depicts two women sleeping together and two men sleeping together. It's like a storybook. If any of you remember those books called Buff and Chip and, and, and you see the dog playing with the, the kids nicely, back in the days that's what we had, normal, but now they have for kids, gay and bisexual things, and for 10 and up. In the UK it became mandatory for kids to learn from the first grade, from grade R, that it's okay to have two mommies and two daddies. What about the Muslim kids? I'm not worried about the other children. Allah help them and Allah guide them, but they are not our responsibility. Our children are our responsibility. What are they learning? Do they have a right not to learn these things because they are Muslim and it goes against their faith? Of course they do. We have a right to freedom of speech. And if we have that right to freedom of speech, we can exercise that. No one can force you to do anything. Before it's too late, my brothers act, because before it becomes government policy. So there is a man that's currently sitting in jail in Canada. Name uh, is not important, but his child was experiencing what's called gender dysphoria. So what happens is, this sometimes is a legitimate issue where a person is mentally affected and they feel extremely uncomfortable in their body. And it can be treated normally. But now, the child, they took her, he took his daughter to the hospital, 14 years old. And she said, you know, I feel like I may be a boy. And immediately, what did they do? Within the next few hours, they wanted to start administering hormones and puberty blockers that will change this girl into a boy. And the father refused. And because of that, he's sitting in jail. It became illegal now to stop your kid. Can you imagine? It becomes illegal to stop your child from making a decision like this. But why only this? Because I would compare it, there are people today, what we call transable. 
And this is also a bit mind-boggling to me. They call trans able. So me and you, alhamdulillah, most of us here are able-bodied human beings. We have two arms, let's say. But there are people who feel that they should only be born with one arm, although they have two. So like a man trapped in a woman's body, this is a disabled trapped in an able's body. So he wants to go to the hospital now and he says, I want to remove my one arm because I feel like a disabled in an able-bodied person. Allah guide this human being. But anyway, what happened is they would refuse this. They don't do this. So why is it okay for a boy to change into a girl and vice versa, but not an able-bodied person to change to a disabled? That doesn't make sense anymore. Why is it only the issue of gender? And the same drugs, my dear brothers, I won't mention the names just for other reasons, but the same drugs that are mentioned or used as puberty blockers for the kids, the same hormones that are given to these children were the same drugs or the same hormones used to chemically castrate pedophiles. If you, if you have a convicted pedophile, they would give them these drugs so that they would be chemically castrated, become impotent or sterilized chemically still have their body parts and their organs, but no longer working. This is the same stuff they give to kids. And there's no long-term studies done on this to say the harmful effects over the years. In fact, I believe there was a case of a man or a woman who changed into a man on the outside and had all his organs changed and everything, his or her organs, I don't know what to call them anymore. But after a while, they lost their medical insurance and hair started to grow in the urethra on the inside and cause infections every three weeks. These things are going to happen to the kids. Who is going to protect them? When will it become enough that we stand up and say, look, this can be for other people, but not for us. This should not be for us. As Muslims, we have the right so now also in Canada, if someone refuses to call another by their pronouns, so now this is a new thing also, I can identify as whatever pronouns I want. So you can, I can tell you in Canada that you have to call me she, or you have to call me they or them, and if you don't, it becomes illegal. You can get locked up for that now. So I come, and, and people are making up their own pronouns that don't even exist in the dictionary. Now you get the young kids who are fighting activists. They call themselves Zim, Zer, and Zay. Just to be, I mean, special. Nothing else. And if you don't call me that, I have the right to take you to court. Whatever happened to free speech? Just because someone tells me that's their reality, that's not my reality. The Haq, my dear brothers, we know is one. But I challenge you to go look at documentaries where people are interviewed from the LGBTQ community. Wallahi, they have many Haq. They say that your reality is your reality, and that's your truth, and my reality is my reality, and it's the truth. Even if it's two completely opposite things. So I'll tell you, they interviewed just one normal lady in the road who was at this LGBTQ rally or feminist rally. And the interviewer, He's saying, so in my reality, you don't exist. Is that true? And she goes, yes. He tells him, yes, to you, I don't exist. So then he said, but how are we having this conversation? She says, are we really? <laughs> People don't rely on their senses and their smell and their ears anymore. What world will we be living in if we don't rely on our senses to tell us the haq? It's in fact interesting, we had these types of people who denied reality uh, in, in the time of, even before Islam, we call them the Sophists. And Imam al-Nasafi, who was like in the five, six hundreds, he talks about these people. And he says, okay, so in my reality you don't feel pain. So now come, let me give you a scorpion or a nice snake to bite you and we'll see if your reality is my reality and what will happen. He actually says this. Because sometimes these people are so, you know, unfortunately they are denying reality. How do you get through to someone like this? 
So now the question comes in, how do we save our own? Because I've seen already, I've spoken to many people who had this case where their children have ran away, became atheists, gone on the LGBTQ, identify as gay, lesbian, whatever they want to identify as, and they've lost their children. How do we deal with this? And the first question we have to ask ourselves as Muslims, now we just tackle it from a Muslim point quickly. The first question we have to ask ourselves, is it possible to be a gay Muslim? And bear with me, but the answer is yes. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave men, most men desire for women, and women desire for men. When you were unmarried, when you were, you know, sometimes you can't control your gaze, or sometimes you can control your gaze, you see a woman, a pretty woman. And you have feelings for her. If you act on those feelings, it's haram, isn't it so? If you don't act on those feelings, with the intention of doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you get rewarded. Now let's say some person who is a Muslim who had mental trauma, and personally for me, uh, among some of the studies that show mental trauma either while the child was young or either some significant uh, child abuse or whatever it may be causes some kids to become gay or transgender later on in their life. So now let's say there's a Muslim who had abuse in his life and he now wants to identify with LGBTQ matters. So now if he has feelings for another man just say, and he does not act upon it. Is he still a Muslim? Yes. Did he do haram? No. He has a mental issue, and we have to treat it that way. Meaning what? Meaning how do we help this person? If someone wants to commit suicide today in our community, do we leave him, or do we try to help him? We need to start looking at LGBTQ from our own. I'm not talking about anyone else from our own. We need to start treating it and helping people. So therefore, that means they need to become welcome in the masjid. Can anyone stop this person if he is not doing haram, if he is a Muslim, he still says la ilaha illallah and he's fighting his urges for the sake of Allah. This is by definition a mu'min. By definition, he may be someone that's sick, but he's still striving for Allah. Now we find that when people come out like this and say, look, I need help, I'm attracted to men, Muslims become revolted and we become disgusted. This is a big problem. What gives us the right, my dear brothers, to stop anyone from coming into the masjid to find Allah? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi never stopped anyone from coming into the masjid. The man comes, he pees in the masjid, and he goes, the Sahaba are ready to chop off his head, but Rasulullah says, no, you go clean it up and you help this man. What will we do when people who are having issues in their deen, this is a place of mercy and rahmah, we have to let other people in. And we have to say, look, we understand there's a line to draw also. If you want to come in and worship Allah as a gay Muslim, no problem. I still don't like the ideology or the term gay Muslim because it really shouldn't be a thing. But if you want to come in as a Muslim who identifies with LGBTQ stuff and pray to Allah, there is no problem. But the moment you want to come and, and protest and try to propagate your teachings here, that's when we say no. Now it becomes a problem. If you want to profess your ideology and bring other people to this, that's when it does become a problem. But otherwise, we need to start thinking, how would we help these people? How are Muslim psychologists going to take on the duty of trying to say, either we help them, because they believe in Allah and they believe the stuff is haram. But sometimes, mental issues have an effect. And the issue of mental wellness is a very hot topic today. Muslims are suffering with this as well. LGBTQ people who are Muslims, need this help as well. So we need to put away that stigma in our minds because if you can imagine your son or daughter one day comes and tells you I'm gay or lesbian, then would you still want to be disgusted by that? Or how would you treat that? Because I've seen people who are lost 
because they were disgusted by it at first and they kicked the child out or they re were revolted by the child and then for the next 20 to 30 years they never spoke to the child once again. child became estranged. Would we like that for ourselves? Or do we start welcoming people back to the masjid, start calling these people, start saying, you are my Muslim brother and I want to help you or sister for that matter. And that's why also they are becoming gay only masjids. They are becoming masjid where it's gay only allowed. Are we going to actually accept this bid'ah? This is a true bid'ah. At the masjid everyone is welcome, but now they are gay only masjids, they are gay only dhikr circles. How are we going to tackle this? How are we going to come to terms and come to, together as an ummah to say now enough is enough? Everyone is allowed to do what they want, but us as Muslims, we believe a certain way and we have the right to live a certain way. And so therefore, that also means one thing. We have to live and live well with these people. Why? The people of the LGBTQ, some of them are genuinely good people. Whatever they believe in or whatever it is, some of them have maybe good character. Our form of da'wah is simple. We don't like the sin. We like the person. We like the person. We love every human being. Allah said, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam." We have given karam to all of Bani Adam. Everyone deserves respect. We don't have to respect the sin. And so therefore, one day if we are good to them, perhaps they may enter into Islam. Our da'wah is a new form nowadays, my dear brothers and sisters. It's not that easy anymore. But I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us, to keep us on the straight path, to keep our minds together. And for, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for one major thing, and that is unity. Ya Allah, give us unity. Let us stop fighting for these small sectarian issues that are secondary so that we can come together and fight the issues that are uh, attacking us from outside, Ya Allah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us all protection and our children. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the Muslims victory in at least being able to love on their own. Jazakumullah khair. Subhanallah wa bihamdika shahadu an la ilaha ilan tastaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Takbir Allah Akbar Walilah Alhamd Shukran Jazakallah Khair to our guest uh, Sheikh Muaz Kala who hails from Pretoria and uh, he was he's an international lecturer as I mentioned he was also the resident scholar of Masjid Abu Bakr Siddiq in Pretoria he was the previous resident scholar at Medina Institute in Arkansas in the United States of America. He studied in the USA and in Jordan, and he's currently pursuing his honors degree in Islamic studies at UNISA. And he spoke to us on a very, very important topic, an issue which is very challenging and growing, and an issue that is facing our little children in school, May Allah protect us and our families and our children. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh, for that beautiful, very thought-provoking uh, lecture. May Allah grant us the capacity of understanding and to prepare ourselves and our children and our grandchildren against the growing concerns and challenges that they are currently facing at school, at college, at university, at places of work, it is really challenging and a lot of our youth are falling into this trap. Girls becoming lesbians, wallahi, I'm sitting, I can concur with everything that the Sheikh has said. Because sitting on a daily basis here in my office with growing problems in our community, I'm sitting with girls having become lesbians, sitting with boys who confess to their parents that they are gay and homosexual. And it is disturbing. It is disturbing. It is not something that any parent wants at their doorstep. Let us make dua in this holy hour of Juma, in the sacred hour that Allah keeps, his, keeps all of us in his divine safekeeping, his loving care, and his protection. Amin ya Rabbal Alameen. And may Allah bless you, Sheikh, to keep up the sterling work that you are doing, Alhamdulillah. 
just a few announcements. We know there's quite a few people who has left for the journey of Hajj already, and still some people are going. And I've got a greeting here from Malika Railun Nisali. She is from 8 Saturn Close, Saria State, and she will be departing on this journey of Hajj on Monday the 13th of June. We hope that and pray that Allah grant her a salama journey, as well as uh, Fadlur Rahman and his wife Rashida Davids, they will also be embarking on the Hajj journey on Monday the 13th of June and they will be departing from 39 Denver Road in Rondebosch East. For all our Hajjaj, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep them safe inshallah, grant them all a salama travel to and fro and grant them all a Hajj Makbul and a Hajj Mabarur. Amin Ya Rabbal Alameen. And then we have been asked to make dua for a few people. First and foremost, Muhammad Zain Kamish from Newfields for dua shifa for him, for his good health. We have also been asked to make dua for Adnan Daniels, the son of Fuad Daniels, who will be going, undergoing a major operation in Johannesburg. May Allah make the operation a great success. Amin. We also make dua for Ghulam Hussein Osman, uh, lovingly and affectionately known as JJ, dua for Shifa for him, inshallah, as well as for Usman Parker from Cravenby, who is currently in the ICU. And of course, we pray for Sheikh Muhammad Murad, the Imam of Mill Street Masjid, who has gone through operation and is slowly recovering. May Allah grant him full recovery and Shifa and Kamila to all our sick people at home and in hospital. We have also been asked to make dua for Sami Uddin Hanika. He is the husband of Nisa Gaby, who make the beautiful rakams that is hanging in the passageway there at the back by the masjid. He passed away. May Allah grant him and all our deceased Jannatul Firdaus. Amin Ya Rabbal Alameen. And also we have made a request for Qur'ans that we send to Angola, and we thank everyone who have responded. We have collected over a thousand Qur'ans, which we have sent to Angola for the needy and the poor communities there. Alhamdulillah, may Allah richly reward you and bless you for your response. This coming Thursday, inshallah, will of course be National Youth Day, uh, where we celebrate and commemorate the, the youth who stood up in the face of a powerful apartheid government of the past and who brought that racist apartheid government to its knees. Alhamdulillah, we will be celebrating and commemorating Youth Day on Thursday, and therefore this coming next week, Friday, we will, because of Youth Day, our entire Juma will be conducted by our youth, inshallah, in preparation to prepare them to take up their role and the position as our future fathers and leaders of tomorrow, inshallah. So next, next Friday, you can look forward to an all youth Jumu'ah from the announcements to the khutbah, to the salah, to the facilitation of the entire Jumu'ah program will be done by our youth of our community, inshallah. And we also make dua for all our students who are currently writing exams in the schools and colleges uh, le uh, institutions of learning. May Allah grant them all great success. Amin ya Rabbal Alameen. So yes, and the MJC Thursday, the youth branch, the youth group will be having a braai, as I said last week, also a braai day on Thursday on Youth Day, and all the proceeds, half of it, will go to the activities presently uh, locally here, and half of the proceeds that they will make will go towards the orphans and the institutes in Palestine for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. And once again, I call upon the people, the community, and those who are listening on Facebook and YouTube and all social media to please Thursday come here to Masjid Al-Quds, support the effort and the endeavors of our youth because they are supporting our brothers and sisters in Palestine and also for the protection of our first Qibla, which is Masjid Al-Aqsa. May Allah grant great success and may we as a community respond Positively, Amin, Ya Rabbal Alamin. Shukran, Jazakallah Khair, and Bayit Ramakasi. Allah
اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمدا رسول أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة
ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين واذل الشرك والمشركين رب اختم لنا بالخير برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم عبده ورسوله أما بعد قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله صدق الله العلي العظيم وقال النبي المصطفى صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم في الحديث الصحيح من كان يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر فلا يأتي النساء في الدبرها أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام أما بعد بارك الله لي ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعنا وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم اللهم صل وسلم وزد وتعلم ودفد وبارك زلالك وكمالك على زين عبادك وأشرف نبادك سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وصحبه وسلم سلم ورضي الله تبارك وتعالى عن كل صحابة أجمعين الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض وجعل الظلمات والنور ثم الذين كثروا بربهم يعدلون والحمد لله الذي لا يودي الشكر نعمة من نعمه إلا بنعمة منه توجب على مودي مادي نعمه بآدائها نعمة حادثة يجب عليه الشكر بها وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم عبده ورسوله أما بعد قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر صدق الله العلي العظيم وقال النبي المصطفى صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله في الحديث الصحيح اتق الله حيث ما كنت وأتبع سيئة الحسنة تمعها وخالق الناس بخلق الحسن أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام أما بعد إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلال أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما 
اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا ابراهيم وعلى ال سيدنا ابراهيم في العالمين انك حميد مجيد ورضي الله تبارك وتعالى عن ساداتنا ذوي القدر الجلي ابي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر اصحاب رسول الله اجمعين من المهاجرين والانصار وعن التابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر دين سيدنا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وعملا صالحا ورزقا طيبا وقلبا ساطعا وشفاء من كل داء اللهم إنا نسألك من كل خير ما سألك منه نبيك وحبيبك محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله ونعوذ بك من كل شر ما استعاذك منه نبيك وحبيبك محمد صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله أنت المستعان وعليك البلاغ ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم ألا إن أولياء الله لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون الذين آمنوا وكانوا يتقون بفضل سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يعمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون أذكر الله يذكركم ودعوه يستجب لكم ولا ذكر الله تعالى أعلى وأولى وأعز وأجل وأتم وأهم وأكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة فإن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا موقوتا الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله يا الصلاة حين الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين إن في خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف الليل والنهار لآيات لآيات لأولي الألباب الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم ويتفكرون في خلق السماوات والأرض ربنا ما خلقت هذا باطلا سبحانك فقنا عذاب النار الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد 
وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يعود حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأزواجه وذريته وأحبابه وأتباعه أجمعين اللهم اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنأمت عليه من النبيين والصديقين والشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا اللهم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعيننا وجعلنا للمتقين إماما يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا كريم يا لطيف يا الله we ask you for your love يا الله يا الله we ask you for the love of those whom you love يا الله يا الله we ask you for the love of those actions which will bring us closer to you يا الله يا الله make your be make your love more beloved to us than our friends and our family and the entire universe يا الله Ya Allah, we ask you to keep us safe in these trying times, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you for all of those who are sick, Ya Allah, grant them shifa, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, for all of those who are suffering and going through difficulty, Ya Allah, grant them ease, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, for all of those who have lost someone, Ya Allah, replace them with your presence, Ya Allah, for yours is the best of presence, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, safeguard our children, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, guide them on the Sirat al Mustaqim, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you to guide our children, Ya Allah, for we are incapable and you are the one who can guide them, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you to keep us safe from all the calamities of the earth, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you to shower us with your Rahmah and your mercy, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we ask you to shower this gathering with your Rahmah and mercy, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, make it only a gathering for you, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, let us not leave here except that you forgive us for our sins, Ya Allah. بفضل سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين جزاكم الله خير والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته
one will care for you like your parents will care for you. At Annur Education Center, we give orphans a loving home, clothing, food, and education. Be the orphan's parent by sponsoring an orphan for 18,000 Rand or 1,500 Rand per month. Annur Education Center, a place where orphans call home. Imagine, imagine a world where each person has access to their basic rights. A world where everyone is equal. Imagine a world where each person will have an equal share in each single seed of wheat. Where each child has the freedom to learn. This Ramadan, we ask you to feed the fasting in 14 countries around the world with AMA. Provide an iftar box for 100 rand, a hamper for 1,500 rand, or feed a village for 15,000 rand. Donate today at Africa Muslims Agency and imagine the difference you can make.